Hi, welcome back to this garage rebuild series. I think this is part seven. In the last part, I mentioned that once I finish the walls inside of here, I'll be ready to move in. But then I decided to put one more obstacle in the way. And that is before I move in, I wanted to finish the floor off with a beautiful epoxy flake coating. So find out how I did this DIY epoxy coating with professional products and with professional results for a fraction of the budget. The first step in prepping for the epoxy coating is basically just cleaning the floor. Now at this point in the filming, I've broomed the floor off and I blew the dust with a leaf blower. And I noticed that there was a minor casting issue in the floor with where I found a few blobs of dried cement on the surface. So I put a masonry wheel on my grinder and I ground that down smooth. Next, I used a metal floor scraper and basically just scraped off all the construction debris like leftover drips of drywall compound or latex paint off the floor. And then I followed all that up with a thorough vacuuming and pressure washing. Now we're ready for the next step, which is the acid etching. So for the acid etching, the tools and materials I used are two five-gallon buckets, some baking soda, a cheap one-gallon plastic garden sprayer, my pressure washer, a scrub brush with a long handle, some protective gear, and two gallons of muriatic acid. Notice my floor is a bit discolored, and that is because I tried acid etching already and failed. Now, I didn't hurt anything, it just wasn't effective. So I went back to the drawing board and got some better instructions from a website, and then I tried them for a second time and got much better results. So that's what I'm going to detail out for you. The link to these instructions are in the video description so you can print them out for yourselves and follow them along. Now one key piece of advice from these new instructions are to do the process in a small area at a time. It also mentions that one gallon of acid solution will cover about 50 to 70 square feet. Well, if you divide my garage into the six sections that are created by those concrete stress seams, each of those sections is about 75 square feet. And I happen to have a one gallon sprayer, so that's perfect. I already have done the rear four sections, so now I'm going to demonstrate to you the process on the fifth section, which is in the front of the garage. The first step in the process is to put on my protective gear. I'm wearing glasses, a respirator, long gloves, long clothes, and tall rubber boots. Then I prepped my neutralizer solution in the green bucket by adding eight cups of baking soda into two gallons of water. The instruction call for four cups per gallon. I'm using my orange bucket, which just contains clean water, just so I didn't have to disconnect the hose from the pressure washer. Next, I mix the acid solution right into the sprayer. The instructions call for a three to one mixture that's four parts total, three parts water, one part acid. In my one gallon sprayer, I pour three quarters of a gallon of water from my orange bucket. And then after that, I carefully pour in a quarter of a gallon of the acid. Now remember, the full gallon marking on the sprayer is not at the top, so don't overfill and spill it over. Also, in bold print on the instructions, it says, always add water first, then acid, not the other way around. In other words, always add the acid into the water. And the reason for this is because you could cause a violent fizzing reaction when the water starts to pour into full strength acid. So you always want to pour the acid into the water. Once the sprayer is ready, I use my hose to dampen the concrete. Then I start spraying the acid solution on the concrete. Now, after doing this a few times, I've learned a few things, and that is that the one gallon applied to 75 square feet is like about five complete coatings. So save your time and just take your time and lay it down really heavily the first couple of times. And you will notice as you're spraying it that it's making a fizzy sound and it starts turning like a milky white or yellowish color as it reacts to the concrete. After really soaking the area, that's about two heavy coats, I still have about a third of a gallon still left in the sprayer. So at this point, I'll grab my brush and I'll lightly brush the solution on the area. And then after that, I'll just keep going over the area with the sprayer until the contents are completely empty. 
Now I'm trying not to walk on the area because it will melt the soles of my boots a little bit. So it'll, you know, the black will, the sole will come off the boot. So um, I try to keep off the area. Now the instructions say to let the solution sit for about 15 minutes, but I found that it takes about 15 minutes or more just to empty out that whole gallon uh, onto the, uh, the surface there. So pretty much once I finish the solution in, that, in the gallon, I then immediately start prepping my sprayer for the neutralizer. So I grab my green bucket and I re-stir the baking soda in it because the, it separates very quickly. Once that's stirred up really well, then I pour about a third of a gallon of that into the same sprayer. And then I spray this over the area with one heavy coat you'll see that the acid will fizz and foam when the neutralizer is applied to it. And if you see any areas where the acid solution is pooled up or thicker in some areas, make sure you spray extra neutralizer on those areas. Notice that I will start walking on the sections that have been neutralized with my boots. And then when I'm done with the whole neutralization process, if there's any left in the sprayer, I'll go ahead and spray that neutralizer on my boots as well. After letting the neutralizer sit for about 15 minutes, we'll rinse it off. Now the instructions suggest that you should not use a pressure washer to rinse the neutralizer for fear that you could push any unneutralized acid into the porous concrete. Now I am using my pressure washer, but notice I'm keeping the wand high off the surface and horizontal so that it's rinsing the area, but it not, it's not pressing down onto the floor. After about three or four passes of this rinsing, I will then pick up my scrub brush and scrub the area. And then I'll pick the pressure washer back up and do it a few more times vigorously. Now once this dries, you will see a white powder on the surface. This is calcium bicarbonate and it's created from the chemical reaction. You want this thoroughly cleaned off before the epoxy coat because it will interfere with the base coat adhesion. I will let it dry and then I'll do another pass at scrubbing and pressure washing it to prepare for the epoxy. Now how we know we're successful in the etching process is after it's dry, it should feel uniformly rough like medium grit sandpaper. If it's still smooth, you may need to repeat this process over again. Okay, well, I'm drying it out right now. I've done about two or three passes of pressure washing it. You can see there's still areas that are a little bit wet. There's still a little bit of a whiter. Uh, my concern with getting this powder off is I don't know how much of it's powder, how much, it's, how much of it is just dry concrete. As long as you can put your hands on it, rub it hard and not feel any powder, I think it's clean. What I ended up doing, I'm sorry for the fan noise, but I used my scrub brush and some simple green, and you could use anything that had, you know, like a degreaser or detergent. And I used my pressure washer and I just washed the whole floor, sprayed simple green, scrubbed it everywhere, just scrubbed everything, and then pressure washed it a couple more times. So it's just a lot of washing and washing and washing. Ugh, I'm sick of washing it. Um, but yeah, you can see that. Um, I'm going to basically go over it now and just like, I'm going to do a final vacuuming with my shop vac. Just go over everything just one more time, just in case there's anything that's loose, you know, any loose debris. Um, just keep looking. I've got a rag and I keep going over these spots to see if there, there is any powder on them, anything that's really white. And, um, you know, I'll spot clean more. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, I think I'm almost ready to go. So once I get this totally clean and dry, I'll, I'm going to start on the epoxy coating. For our epoxy base coat, I'll be using this product here. I have a link to the Amazon product, which is branded Master Protective Coatings, or MPC. They apparently got bought by a company called Latex, and you can choose to buy it through the Amazon or direct from latexepoxy.com, which is also linked in the video description. MPC 100 is a professional grade, 100% solids epoxy floor base coating. Now they have several color tints you can choose from, so you can color coordinate it with the flake coating if you choose to do flakes. 
Now I chose the light gray tint with the flakes that I ordered as well. The specs say that this can cover 400 square feet, but that's for a non-flake coating, which they suggest two thin coats of this. If used as a base coat for the flakes, it can spread as a single coat up to 600 square feet. Now my garage is about 480 square feet, just less than 500, so it should be able to do a pretty thick base coat. Next, I purchased 25 pounds of flakes. I chose this color Stargazer, which goes well with the light gray base coat. I've linked to the Amazon product in the video description, but I can't guarantee that this color will be available, so just confirm the color when you're on the product page. Next, the tools I used. I have a rubber squeegee. This is kind of like one used for a driveway sealer. A paint roller. Now the roller pictured here is for self-leveling concrete and it didn't work for epoxy. So I ended up just using a standard nine inch paint roller with a quarter inch nap smooth cover. Then I got some spike shoes and a paddle mixer for my drill. I start by opening both buckets and pouring part B into the part A bucket because it has a little bit of extra room for mixing. And I mixed it with my drill for about two to three minutes. Once mixed, I quickly pour it out over the floor. You're supposed to pour it out within five minutes because it actually hardens in the bucket quicker than when being spread out on the floor, which is kind of counterintuitive. From there, I would spread it out with my rubber squeegee. Once I get it spread out as well as I can with the rubber squeegee, now I'm basically just grabbing my nine inch roller and I'm just painting it onto the floor. I start by, for the most part, going one way with it to try to get everything covered. Then you'll see later, I go a different direction and I go all over the floor in that other direction. If you wanna get your edges better than I did, I didn't really care about my edges too much, but get a paintbrush and do your edges first. Preferably have another person helping you with that and that'll go quicker. This has a, a pretty long, uh, set time here. I think I probably have about 45 minutes to an hour to work with it. So I was doing it solo and, and I got it all done and I it still was very wet before I got to the flake part. So um, it's doable for one person and 500 square feet, but you got to work quickly and diligently. So at this point I did grab my brush and I'm just trying to pull some of the excess epoxy out of the seams and I'm spreading it back around just so it didn't pull up too much in those stress seams. Now on to the broadcasting here. You'll notice that I'm just, I put it into my clean orange bucket and I'm just taking about 10 or 15 pounds at a time and walking all over the floor and just throwing it into the air and trying to spread it evenly. Since this is my first time doing it, I, I will say that I didn't do the best job, but I did my, you know, I did an okay job. 25 pounds of flakes will cover 500 square feet at about 80% broadcasting. So you will see your base coat between some of it really 50 pounds you would need to get a whole 100% broadcast. Because of the weather, I had to wait about 48 hours before I could do the top coat, but here's what the base coat looks like. As you can see, my amateur chip broadcasting job was a bit spotty, but hopefully the top coat will help even that out by making everything shiny. Well, to prep for the top coat, I used a concrete leveling squeegee that has a thin metal blade to initially just scrape and loosen any badly adhered flake. I just lightly glided over the surface. Now if you don't have something similar to that, just use your rubber squeegee. Then I used my brush and broom to just further loosen any unadhered chips. After that I vacuumed the floor for about an hour, I went over it about three times. And then after that I used my air gun to do a final cleaning of any loose debris. We are now ready for the top coat. The product I use for the top coat is MPC 275, which is a professional grade polyaspartic polyurea UV stable clear coat. Now, unlike the base coat, they didn't leave room in the part A bucket for mixing. So I had to mix both parts in my five gallon bucket. Now, once mixed thoroughly, I applied it similar to the base coat. I dumped it out in sections on the floor I used my rubber floor squeegee to spread it all around, and then I followed it up with a standard paint roller with a smooth nap cover. Now it's the same as before, I rolled it thoroughly in both directions to get it nice and smooth, 
and you'll need to work a little bit quicker with this top coat as it starts to tack up within 30 minutes unlike the base coat which gave you almost an hour. Well I'm embarrassed to say I didn't even think about cleanup until after I finished the base coat. Since I threw away the buckets and the roller covers that I used, the only tools I needed to clean off after each step was the paddle mixer and my squeegee. Now for the epoxy base coat, I found this product that I already had on my shelf. It's a paint and epoxy remover and it worked great to remove that base coat from the tools. Using gloves and an old rag, I just applied it and wiped off the tools. But for the polyaspartic top coat, it really didn't do anything. I believe I just used acetone or paint thinner to clean that off the tools. Okay, so it's been a little over a day, probably about 30 some hours, and I'm able to walk on it. I'm not gonna move anything heavy like my bus back onto the surface and for about a week. They say, I think, don't park on it with a car for about a week. But as you can see, it looks beautiful. Uh, I'm really liking it. What I wanted to do now is to kind of give you a comparison of my DIY job versus what I think the professionals would, uh, would do and how it, how it compares. Uh, now, for one thing, if you look at my edges here, they're not great. They're purposely not great because I didn't really paint them out or edge them like a professional would have. Um, so this might not be acceptable for you. It is acceptable for me because this entire wall right here is going to be covered with shelving and you know storage and everything. So you really won't see that wall. In fact, where my uh, pe pressure washer kind of ruined my paint there, I might not even touch that up because it's going to be hidden by all sorts of uh, shelving and, and storage. So uh, a professional would have probably painted all that and, and made it look nice and right. Uh, also, maybe even instead of just kind of feathering into the seam there, they probably would have taped that off nice and clean. But that's, I did that on purpose. Um, I'm gonna give myself a C minus here for my installation. You can even see that it's a little bit, um, you know, s shinier in some areas and less shiny in other areas. Uh, it's all about consistency, and that's where I probably didn't do the best job. Uh, so in each of the three uh, steps, right, your base coat, your flake broadcasting, and your clear coat, your, uh, you know, top coat, in every case, I think I didn't do as well at consistency, mostly because I was by myself. Um, you know, my, my son was going to do this with me, that's why I bought an extra set of spiky shoes, but he couldn't because of a, uh, he was recovering from a minor surgery, and I was just too impatient, so I wanted to get it done. But having another person on there, not only to have a second pair of eyes to see that things got uh, uh, covered consistently, but also just having another pair of hands to work half the floor while you do the other half would definitely would have helped. So my consistency in broadcasting wasn't great. My consistency even with the top coat, there's some drier spots, some shinier spots. That could have been better. But on a positive note, I'm going to give myself a B plus in terms of my prep work and my products. Um, because I think that is actually even more important than the cosmetics of what I just described. Even on the edges here, where I didn't even get much broadcast, you could see a lot of that base coat. I mean, this stuff is hard as rock. Uh, this stuff is not going to come off. This is not going to fail anytime soon. This stuff is really well adhered. And so I, I don't have a problem saying that this is going to last a long time. And as far as my inconsistency in the different applications, yeah, you know what, but once everything gets filled in and this garage floor gets covered with equipment and stuff, you probably won't notice that those kind of cosmetic issues as much uh, once every, you know, once it gets full of stuff and it has a little age to it. So I'm very happy with the result. And so what I wanted to do next was talk about what I'm going to do is a comparison of the products that I used and kind of put to, together a kit for you that uh, with, with all the costs and where to buy all the products um, and that will, and I'm going to compare that to another common professional grade epoxy kit that's on Amazon as well as compare that to a common DIY kit that you can buy at the Home Depot or any big box store and we'll compare and contrast the cost 
and the quality of the materials that you're able to get. Okay, now we're going to talk about products and pricing, and I'm going to compare my epoxy kit here that I've kind of built out of Amazon links with some other popular brands and products out there. So here's the kit I built. Now these are all Amazon links and they're all priced at what they are today that these prices could change or the products could disappear. Also, you could go to the latexepoxy.com link in the video description as well to shop for the MPC products direct from the manufacturer if you so choose. What I put together here is a $550 kit. Now this doesn't include all the things that I showed you like you know, protective equipment like gloves and paint brushes and paint rollers and things like that. But those are things I thought were fairly uh, available and most people already have some of that stuff in their basement or garage anyway. These are the things that you specifically might need to buy for the epoxy floor kit. What I have here is a paint mixer for the drill, some spike shoes, a nice 24 inch hard rubber squeegee like the one I used, the epoxy flakes, the top coat, and the epoxy base coat. If you divide that up, it's $500 for the products and about $50 for these tools. So let's see how that compares to other brands and manufacturers. Okay, so the first comparison we're going to do is another professional grade product and epoxy kit that's made for consumers but with professional grade materials. It is $700, which is about $150 more than the kit I put together, but let's see how it does compare because it is professional grade epoxy. So if we scroll down to the description, we'll see what we get here. Um, you could see that they have multiple color, about five different colors. The last one kind of looks like mine. Um, so the kit includes three gallons of 100% solids epoxy that's very equivalent to the MPC 100, same amount too. But here we only get one gallon of top coat and then I'm trying to read what's in this top coat and it doesn't say polyaspartic or polyurea. I don't know what kind of top coat this is. It could just be more clear epoxy and you only get one gallon of it. You get spiked shoes, you get acid etch. Now this acid etch is a powder. I didn't include the uh, muriatic acid in my a list of tools or materials, but that's about $9 for a gallon of it. I bet this is equivalent to that. Here's the thing I didn't talk to you about with regard to the acid etch. I did the acid etch process and it worked well for me. Now that's because I have a five month old slab that was recently poured this year and it's never been coated with anything. It's never been really used as a garage with regard to like oils and greases and solvents and all that stuff soaking into the concrete. So the acid etch worked really well for me. If your garage floor has a lot of age to it, it's an old slab of concrete or it's got uh, previous coatings or really engraved dirt or oils into it, you probably won't have success with the acid etch, much less this one, which is probably a cheaper version. And you probably would have to rent a flooring sander uh, with diamond grinding blades or call a concrete company to have them sand your floor with diamond grinders to etch it instead of the acid etch. So that's why I'm saying the acid etch is probably not even whether you do this powdered form or the muriatic acid that I did, it's probably ne negligible. Most people will have to have a diamond grind. And then so you get like all these other consumable things like gloves and a paintbrush, wooden mixing sticks, roller pads. It's all stuff you probably already have or negligible in cost. The non-skid additive is just like this little BB type stuff, like bead blasting type stuff. And what you do is throw this into your clear coat if you so choose to make the clear coat not as slick. Now that's great and all, but it's not necessary when you have 25 pounds of flakes. You could see that this only gives you six pounds of flakes, which means you're doing a 10% a, a or less broadcast, which means your floor will be very smooth and you might need that non-skid additive. With 25 pounds of flakes, like what I did, I get I give you four pound, four times more flakes, you can get an almost 100% broadcast, which means you will already have some texture to your floor and you probably don't need that non-skid additive. The squeegee, it looks like a pretty cheapo, like window cleaning squeegee. I don't know if that's as good, but in the end, this, this kit costs $150 more, you get four times less flakes and half as much top coat and some negligible extra tools or materials. Uh, so I just don't think it equates as well to mine. 
Now we're gonna compare my kit versus a common consumer grade product that you could find at Home Depot. As you can see, this is the gray high gloss two and a half car garage floor kit from Rust-Oleum. It's called Epoxy Shield, and it says it covers up to 500 square feet. Let's see what you get in this kit. It's kind of hard to tell uh, what you actually get because it mentions a top coat, but when you look at the actual kit for $200 here, you don't get top coat. That's an additional add-on of product that you have to buy. What this gives you is the a, a little a packet of concrete etch like the previous one, two-part epoxy floor system, and vinyl color chips. It doesn't say how many vinyl color chips you get, but my guess is based on these pictures here, you're getting less than a 10% broadcast, which means probably three to five pounds of, a, of chips, if even that. And it says that for the base coat that you do get, you only get, let's see, 1.875 gallons. So that's a gallon and an eighth less than our kit for $200 here. Now, if we wanna compare apples to apples, let's also add on their clear coat product, which is this 90 ounce clear high gloss two part epoxy system. And this is $175 more. So now our cost right here for both of these products is $375, which is about $125 less than five, our $500 price point if you exclude our tools from our kit. $125, what does that mean? Well, it means we get uh, over a gallon and an eighth more of the base coat. We get five times more chips and we get over a gallon more of clear coat. And this clear coat's not polyaspartic. It's just uh, another epoxy clear coating. So for $125 more, we get a lot more product and a lot better product for what you pay here for this consumer grade kit. So although these price points much seem, seem much lower, when you look at this and you're like, this is the entire kit for $200 versus my $500 kit, it still does not compare and does not have the same uh, level of product in it. Well, I appreciate you guys following me along on this part of my garage rebuild series here. And I hope you learned a lot. Again, the links to all the products are in the video description and uh, make sure you click on those links because it has my affiliate link there that gives me a little bit of bonus there and even if you don't buy the products. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because on the next part of this garage rebuild will be the final part where I show kind of the end shop tour and what everything looks like. So I would appreciate you subscribing and following along. Thanks so much. Leave a comment if you have any questions.